Okay, so if we just move our friend Dante away for a second, we can get to H.P. Lovecraft's The Complete Cthulhu Mythos Tales. And you can see that uh, the spine is really beautiful. It's, uh, it's a glossy black leather with a uh, teal and white and gold um, detail onto it uh, on there. I'll just get a little bit closer so you can see the detail. I'll bring it out for in a second and we'll get some more light on it. It's a really nice, uh, really nice font. Um, considering this is, well, it's another turn of the century uh, book, right? Uh, or collection of books uh, he was writing around the 1900s, 1920s. Very ominous looking character on top of this tower on the moon background there. Very beautiful um, uh, spine. Now I went for this one rather than the um, the complete HP Lovecraft um, uh, works. Uh, this is the complete Cthulhu Mythos tales. Uh, he didn't only write uh, books about the Cthulhu Mythos. Um, the other book is is much thicker. I don't think it looks anywhere near as nice as this one. Um, this is the front. Uh, again, it's um, the, it's. The details are painted on rather than uh, embossed as they are with some of the other Barnes & Noble's leather-bound collections. Really nice looking front cover there. It's gold and teal and white. It looks fantastic on the black background there. Okay, the edge of it is gold. Let me try and see if I can <laughs> get any indication that it is actually gold. Yes, uh, so th there it is. It looks really nice. On the back of the book, you have uh, just a <laughs> very uh, uh, Lovecraft-esque um, um, elder one, maybe, uh, um, hovering over the planet Earth there. And Cthulhu himself, the tentacles and the wings. Very, very nice detail. So, yeah, so the cover is very beautifully illustrated. In terms of the contents, uh, so it doesn't have all of the stories. Again, I'm not fussed at all about the fact that there, we don't have all of the stories. I'm a big fan of, uh, of the worlds uh, and the, 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 the mythos that uh, Lovecraft wrote about. Um, I've, got, I've got a couple of the games that uh, have come out in the past uh, uh, few years since his works have come out of, um, of uh, copyright. Uh, game creators have, have gone crazy over, over his um Yes, his, his the, the worlds that he's built, um, and they are fantastic games, by the way. I really recommend this one in particular if you like uh, uh, games that you can play solo, actually. Uh, uh, as a two-player game, we've really had a lot of fun with with these, but this is not the review that I'm making at the moment. Um, so as much as I'm a big, big fan of his worlds, I'm not such a fan of his style. Uh, I'm, I don't believe I'm the only person in the world who feels this way. Uh, it's uh, it's it's not the nicest uh, <laughs> style. It's just uh, it's just a bit bit, uh, bit heavy, you know, heavy-handed. Uh, so this is what you get inside. I was what I really wanted to get was the Call of Cthulhu, the color out of space, um, the Dunwich Horror, and at the Mountains of Madness. For me, if those books were present. I was happy. Now, what I didn't know is that the King in Yellow is not a Lovecraft um, uh, story. It's um, I, I actually bought the King in Yellow separately, and it's actually Robert W. Chambers. Um, there you go. Just uh, me being ignorant. Um, it's uh, it's a series of uh, four, if I remember correctly, uh, four um, four stories. Yeah, let's try and find a. Have I just skipped the contents page again? Uh, which um, which just basically have the king in yellow as oh no, there's no contents page. All right, whatever. Um, 
but anyway, it's yeah, it's about four stories that uh, that have the King in Yellow as a central theme, and H.P. Lovecraft was inspired. Oh, here we go. There's a a quotation on the front cover. One of the greatest weird tales ever written. Um, this, by the way, is a really, really nice book. <laughs> I, I strongly recommend this uh, this particular edition, the Pushkin Press edition, which came out this year. Um, very, very nice. Um, uh, mostly very nice um, uh, edition. I, I remember having a, a lot of fun reading it, uh, but I picked it up on a really bad page. Um, yeah, so probably do check uh, if, if this kind of thing bothers you. Um, that is not representative of the rest of the book. Uh, anyway, um, back to the Barnes & Nobles edition, which is um, just very, very nicely uh, printed. Uh, there, I haven't found any any um, uh, problems with the, with the printing. Uh, it's it's very not readable font, much larger than some of the other Barnes & Nobles uh, uh, editions. Uh, there are no illustrations throughout the book other than this uh, other than this very um, Lovecraft-esque um, picture when you just first open the book. And um, and that's it really. Uh, I could show you the uh, the bookmark which is which is a ribbon and come on. So this one is actually a, a creamy kind of gold. It's very pretty, very nice. Um, it's like a yeah, a yellowy, yellowy, creamy kind of gold. And there it is. Um, the H. P. Lovecraft complete Cthulhu Mythos Tales. And once again, like all the Barnes and Nobles. Leather-bound editions looks fantastic on the shelf. Speak to you soon.